Next, we're going to look at the cosine rule. And another huge advantage of the cosine rule is that it doesn't only apply to right angle triangles. So we can take any triangle without a right angle, and our cosine rule will apply to that triangle. We're going to label this in exactly the same way that we did in the previous video for the sine rule. So we've got angle A, angle B, angle C, length A, length B, and length C, where lowercase letters are used for the lengths and uppercase letters are used for the angles. Now the cosine rule states that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a. Now if we look at this formula we can see where the cosine rule will apply and essentially the cosine rule is going to apply when we know two lengths and one angle, but the angle is not an angle that corresponds to one of the lengths. So referring to our triangle, if we know length B and we know length C, we can find length A providing we know angle A. Now the big difference between this and the sine rule is when we applied the sine rule, we needed to know a, an angle that corresponded with a known length. So the sine rule would have applied if we knew angle C for example instead of angle A, or if we knew angle B instead of angle A. Okay, so let's go straight into an example. I'm going to call this angle here 73 degrees. I'm going to call this length here 85 millimeters, and I'm going to call this length here 155 millimeters. Now I'm going to use the cosine rule to find this unknown length here. Now the first thing that we need to do is label that triangle. And if we refer to our formula, the known lengths need to be B and C. So I'm going to call this length here length B, and I'm going to call this length here length C, meaning I'm trying to find length A. Now this fits in perfectly with the formula because what we see here is if the unknown length is length lowercase a, then this angle here will be uppercase a. This angle here will be uppercase C, and this angle here will be uppercase B. So we can go straight into our formula. We have A squared, the thing we're trying to find, equals B squared, well B is 85, plus C squared, C is 155, minus 2 times 85, times 155, times cos of our angle, which is 73 degrees. Therefore, a squared equals, all I'm going to do is run this through my calculator in one go to find a squared. And a squared equals 2, 3, 5, 4, 6, point zero, zero, 6. Now once again, I'm going to leave that value in my calculator because I'm trying to find a. Well, to get a on its own, I need to square root each side of the equation. Square rooting a squared gives me a, and square rooting 23546.006, and that gives me 153.4 to one decimal place. Our units are millimetres, because our other two lengths are in millimetres. Another example of where this might apply is if we know three lengths, but we don't know any of the angles, and we might want to determine one of the angles. So this time, Let's make this 2.2 metres, this can be 5.5 metres, and this can be 5.1 metres. Now I want to use the cosine rule to determine this angle here. Well if we inspect that formula, what we can see is that the only angle that's contained in the formula is angle A. So what I'm going to need to do is call the angle that I'm trying to find angle A. Now it doesn't matter how I label the others, I'm going to call this B and I'm going to call this C. The important thing is that angle A is the angle that I'm trying to find. Now taking into consideration how we've just labelled those angles, that means that's going to be length A, that's going to be length B, and that's going to be length C. Because the lengths and the corresponding angles carry the same letter. So bearing in mind, the thing I'm trying to get on its own is cos A. I'm going to need to go through a number of steps to get cos A on its own. And I'll write these down as we go through. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to minus b squared 
and I'm going to minus c squared as well. I'm going to do two steps at once. So I'm going to do minus b squared from each side, and I'm also going to do minus c squared from each side. Now what that will leave me with is a squared minus b squared minus c squared equaling minus 2bc cos a. Now remember, the thing that I'm trying to get on its own is angle a. At the moment, I've got minus 2bc times cos a. So what I'm going to do is divide each side by minus 2bc. Okay, so dividing each side by minus 2bc, I'm going to get cos a. I'm just putting the thing that I want to find on the left hand side equals a squared minus b squared minus c squared. That was our original left hand side. All of that divided by minus 2bc leaves cos a on its own. Now the final step then in order to get a on its own is I'm going to need to do cos to the minus 1 of each side. And what that will leave me is a because cos to the minus 1 of cos a just leaves me a. On the right hand side I'm going to get cos to the minus 1. I'm going to use two sets of brackets here because my numerator on that fraction needs to remain as a squared minus b squared minus c squared. All of that remains together. Divided by minus 2bc and we notice that the cos to the minus 1 is applied to all of that block. Okay, let's put some numbers into that then. Angle A, the angle I'm trying to find, is cos to the minus 1. Well, A squared is 2.2 squared. B squared is 5.1 squared. Minus C squared, which is 5.5 squared. All of that is our numerator. All divided by minus 2 times B, which is 5.1, times C, which is 5.5. So that gives me cos to the minus 1 of, well, the top of that fraction, 2.2 squared minus 5.1 squared minus 5.5 squared gives me minus 51.42. And the bottom of that fraction, minus 2 times 5.1 times 5.5 gives me minus 56.1. Well, a minus divided by a minus is just going to give me a plus. So now I've got cos to the minus 1 of 51.42 over 56.1, which gives me an angle of 23.57 degrees to two decimal places. Therefore, angle A, the angle in here, is 23.57 degrees. We could go on from here and we could calculate some additional information. Now that we know that angle there, we could use the sine rule. Because remember that A over sine A equals B over sine B. So we could use the sine rule to find angle B. Or alternatively, we could use A over sine A equals C over sine C to find angle C. Once we know one of the other remaining angles, we can find the final angle because the angles of the triangle add up to 180 degrees. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can use the sine and cosine rule in order to find unknown angles and unknown lengths of any triangle. Remember, this isn't limited to right-angled triangles.